Thank you for viewing our video on novel techniques in articular cartilage restoration. In this video, we will cover two main techniques, de novo NT and biocartilage. For both techniques, we will first review surgical images followed by a surgical case example video. For de novo NT, the cartilage defect should be debrided to stable vertical walls with the calcified cartilage layer removed with no subchondral bone bleeding present. After sizing the defect, use foil either from a suture tray or the de novo packaging to create a negative mold. After this is complete, the de novo packaging can then be opened where the media can subsequently be removed using a syringe. This will not be needed later in the procedure. The minced articular cartilage can then be transferred into the negative mold created in the foil. After this is complete, the fibrin can be added to this so that the implant can be manipulated as a single unit and then be transferred from the foil into the defect without any difficulty. This patient was clinically indicated for de novo NT. Based on their arthroscopic findings, there was no contraindications and therefore we proceeded with an arthrotomy. This was performed through a mini arthrotomy to try to avoid any involvement of the vastus musculature. Once the condyle is exposed, debridement is performed as described to the subchondral bone with minimal bleeding. After sizing the defect, the foil is used to create the negative mold. The implant is then prepared on the back table as described. The number of implants utilized depends on the size of the defect and this needs to be predetermined before the day of surgery. As you prepare the implant, attempt to form the pieces into a single layer with the fibrin interposed to decrease the overall thickness of the implant. Place fibrin into the bed of the defect both to decrease any subchondral bone bleeding and also to adhere the implant to the base of the defect. The implant is then lifted from the foil and is placed directly into the defect prior to the fibrin solidifying beneath it. Further adherence can be obtained through digital pressure and if further adherence is necessary, a second layer of fibrin can be placed superficial to this. Now we will review the biocartilage technique in a cadaveric example. Here we see a cartilage defect prepared with the calcified cartilage layer removed with minimal penetration of the subchondral bone plate to decrease any marrow access at that point. Then using a power pick, microfracture is performed in a standard fashion, starting in the periphery and moving centrally ensuring that the integrity of the subchondral bone plate is not violated. The biocartilage is then prepared for implantation by mixing equal parts of the biocartilage with PRP. It is important that the viscosity of this is maintained so that it is not so fluid that it flows out of the defect yet not so firm that it can still be pressed through the application syringe if desired. Here we can see it placed into the defect followed by placement of fibrin glue superficial to this. Care should be taken that the implant is not proud to the superficial cartilage surrounding it. In this case example we start with a diagnostic arthroscopy that confirms that a grade 4 defect is present with no other associated meniscal or tibial damage. Debridement can begin arthroscopically however this procedure was carried out in an open manner through an arthrotomy. After preliminary arthroscopic debridement, the final debridement was performed in an open manner, taking care to remove the calcified cartilage, which is more reliably done in an open manner than arthroscopically. Vertical walls should be created sharply to a healthy edge of cartilage. The defect size can then be measured, and using the power pick device, microfracture can then be performed in a standard fashion. Note here that the integrity of the subchondral bone plate has not been violated in between microfracture drill sites. Using the biocartilage applicator, the biocartilage implant can then be injected into the defect site. Using digital pressure, this should be contoured such that it is not proud to the surrounding superficial cartilage layer. This especially holds true when applying the final superficial layer of fibrin as if this is proud, it can cause shear forces to dislodge the implant from the defect site. 
do not close the arthrotomy until the fibrin has completely polymerized.